Good evening. I'll call this regular Township Council meeting of May 17th, 2022 to order. <coughs> Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Law by following the notice in the office of the Township Clerk <coughs> and by posting the meeting notice on the bulletin board at the Municipal Building on December 22nd, 2021, where it has remained posted since that date. A legal notice appeared in the Daily Record on December 28th, 2021, and the Newark Star Ledger on December 27th, 2021. Council meetings are videotaped and aired on Public Access Channel 21 at 7 p.m. Sundays and Wednesdays, and are also available for viewing at www.participany.net. Would you all join me in the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Carifi? Here. Ms. Grignani? Here. Mr. Musello? Here. Mr. Neglia? Here. Mr. DePiro? Here. Also in attendance are uh, Mayor James Barbario. We have uh, Business Administrator Fred Carr, uh, Township Attorney Michael Salvaggia, and Township Clerk Colette Madden. Uh, Council President, we have a quorum. We may begin. Thank you. Upcoming meetings, June 14th, 2022 at 7 p.m. Our agenda meeting and June 21st, 2022 at 7 p.m., our regular meeting. Approval of minutes, Mr. Naglia. Yes, reorganization meeting 1522, agenda meeting 1522, regular meeting 11822, agenda meeting 2122, regular meeting 21522, agenda meeting 3122, regular meeting 31522, Agenda meeting for 522 and regular meeting for 1922. Motion to approve the minutes by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Ms. Grignani. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Musello. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. And uh, Mr. DePiro. Yes. Motion passes. Presentations and reports, Mayor. Thank you, Council President. Jeannie and I graduated high school back in uh, Mount Lone, say today, Parsippany Hills, remember? I know, right? <laughs> Only five years. All right. Come on up. No problem. Oh, can't see. I don't need this in front of me. Yeah, I do. If you want to hear me. I'll be doing a proclamation whereas every day more than 110 Americans are killed by gun violence, along with more than 200 Americans who are shot and wounded. And on the average, there are only there are nearly 16,000 gun homicides every year. And whereas Americans are 26 times more likely to die by gun homicide than people in other high income countries. And whereas New Jersey has 439 gun deaths every year, with a rate of 4.9% deaths per 100,000 people. And whereas municipalities across the nation, including the towns of Porcipanetroy Hills, are working to end the senseless violence with evidence-based solutions. And whereas protecting public safety in the communities they serve as a mayor's highest responsibility. And whereas support for the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens goes hand in hand with keeping guns away from people with dangerous oh, histories. And whereas mayors and law enforcement officers know their communities best, are most familiar with local criminal activity and how to address it, and are best positioned to understand how to keep their citizens safe. And whereas gun violence prevention is more important than ever, as the COVID-19 pandemic continues to exacerbate gun violence after more than two years of increased gun sales, increased calls to suicides and domestic violence hotlines, and an increase in city gun violence. Whereas in January 2013, Hadia Pendleton was tragically shot and killed at the age of 15. On June 3rd, 2022, to recognize the 25th birthday of Hadia Pendleton, people across the United States will recognize gun violence 
Awareness Day and wear orange in tribute of Hadia Pendleton <laughs> and other victims of gun violence and the loved ones of those victims. And whereas the idea was inspired by a group of Hadia's friends who asked their classmates, classmates to commemorate her life by wearing orange, the color hunters wear to announce themselves to other hunters when out in the woods. And whereas anyone can join the campaign by pledging to wear orange on June 3rd, the first Friday in June in 2022, to help raise awareness about gun violence and whereas we renew our commitment to reduce gun violence and pledge to do all we can to keep firearms out of the wrong hands and encourage responsible gun ownership to help keep our children safe. Now, therefore, I, James R. Barbera, the mayor of the township of Port City, Detroit Hills, to hereby proclaim the first Friday in June, June 3rd, 2022, to be National Gun Violence Awareness Day. I encourage all citizens to support efforts to prevent the tragic events of gun violence and to honor and value human lives, dated the 17th day of May, 2022. That's for you. We didn't have a big enough uh, folder for it, but we'll get you some for it. But I would, I'm gonna put you to work, Joe. You have a minute. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, just stay right here, because I'm sure we're gonna need it. I'm also working for the focus. You don't mind taking the picture? Of course not. He's been taking a picture, Gene. Okay. If you want me to share it with you. Okay. All right. He's been taking a picture. Oh. <laughs> you guys want to come down? Sure, why not? I just wanted to say, if I yeah, can, absolutely. how much I appreciate this, especially in the light of the things. My name is Jean Marie Ambler. I live in 21 Forest Place in Mount Tabor, New Jersey. Um, in the light of everything that has taken place in the last week, we so much appreciate this. Um, we need to help our community to be gun violence free. Yes, Complete your report, Mayor. Yes, just um one thing. Um, <clears throat> on Thursday, I'll have the books for the Finance Committee for the budget, and then once those books are presented to them, we will be having a meeting next week with um, the Business Administrator, the CFO, myself, and our um, auditor. Uh, I'll, I'll be setting up the appointment with Frank Naglia, Councilman, right? Sir, yes, sir. All right, good. And um, Loretta Grandiani, Council Vice President. Thank you. And then you will have the books uh, um, next week sometime. Okay. Thank you. And uh, sure, uh, the, the meeting after that, we will we give the council some time to review the budget to see if there are any questions they have for department heads. Uh, then we will set up the meeting dates for however many we think we might need. Okay. Sounds good. Any reports from the uh, township council? No. No, President. Township attorney? No. Business administrator? So I have nothing. Township clerk? No report at this time. Thank you. Township offices, committees, and reports? Not at this time. <clears throat> okay, down to engineering report. <clears throat> well. Okay. Green Bank Road Safety Improvements Project. The project is complete except for the guardrail replacement. Underground utilities could not be moved, but we have received approval from the NJDEP to adjust the stream bed to allow more space for the new guardrail installation. Work will begin in the next few months once materials become available. No council action required. 2021 road resurfacing, curb and sidewalk program. The annual road resurfacing, curb and sidewalk project has stopped for the winter. Construction activities will commence in May. No council action required. Pudding Stone Heights Road Improvement Project, phase one. Construction on the Pudding Stone Heights Improvement Project is continuing. 
We anticipate the project being completed by the beginning of June, no council action required. Rockaway River flood wall levy inspection and inspection was conducted of the Rockaway River flood wall and levy system. The report indicated the system is in good shape and recommended several maintenance and repair items that should be addressed. We are presently working with our consultant on preparing design details and a cost estimate for the repair work. All vegetation within five feet of the wall and toe of slope is being cleared in accordance with our inspection requirements. No council action required. Traffic signal maintenance for Littleton Road, Rita Drive, Beechwood Road, and the Jefferson Road and Smith Road intersections. This project is for improvements and maintenance to traffic signals located in Littleton Road and Rita Drive, Beechwood Road intersection, and the Jefferson Road and Smith Road intersection. The improvements include the replacement of various signal detection and controller equipment that have failed. Work is anticipated to begin in mid-May, no council action required. Mount Tabor Street improvements, phase seven. The Mount Tabor Street improvements, phase seven project is in design. We anticipate bidding this project in late spring, no council action required. Lake Intervale area street improvements. The first phase of the Lake Intervale area street improvements project is in design. We anticipate bidding the project in late spring, no council action required. Roadway design projects, the following projects are in design. The proposals have been requested. Drumlin Drive stream cleaning, Jefferson Road drainage improvements, North Beverick Road streetscape improvements, Troy Brook stream cleaning, Sylvan Way sidewalk improvements, river and stream, desnagging plans and permits, Etten Road traffic study. No council action required. Thank you. Bids taken. Number one, 4722 supplying pumps, motors, generators, HVAC units, boilers, water heaters, water storage tanks, and parts, repairs for various departments. Item two, 413, 2022, lease of public property. Item B, to be taken. 512, 22, supply of manic polymer for the wastewater treatment plant. Item two, 519, 22, well development services, wells 3, 10, 4, and 4A, and pumping system replacements for wells 3, 10, 4, and 4A. Item 3, 520, 2022. Vail water tank painting and rehabilitation. Item 4, 525, 2022. One new Roland RTW 540 traffic works, 54 traffic sign print slash cut with CWT 1428 work table and flatbed applicator for parks and forestry department. Item 5, 525, 22. Fabrication and installation of new wood shutters at the Smith Baldwin House. Item 6, 526, 2022. Road resurfacing curb and sidewalk program. Now I will entertain a motion to open this meeting to the public. Make a motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. Carifi, seconded by Mr. Musella. Roll call. Mr. Carifi. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. The floor is open to the public to speak on any matter. You have five minutes. Come forward. <coughs> sign in. State your name and address. So one of each got you. Not a problem. Thank you so much. All right, so we'll just pass it down.
Good evening. Um, my name is um, Maria Massana. I live at uh, 25 Metal Bluff Road. I've uh, been a um, Persephone resident for 21 years and love it here. <laughs> so, um, but um, I'm here tonight because I'd like to advocate for the proposed amendments to the zoning code regarding home occupations. Um, in Parsippany, uh, Troy Hills right now, it's been very challenging to have um, someone uh, have a home occupation, so AKA home business, um, with the cottage food rules that came into effect in October of 2021 um, at the state level. Um, so applying even for like a simple home baking business, um, something that I'm pursuing, uh, can cost actually thousands of dollars. Um, after speaking to the zoning board, I've been going back and forth. So um, I just, um, it's, it, there's a thousands of dollars in fees, attorney costs, um, in addition to requiring um, dozens of pages of paperwork. The proposal would make it easier for anyone to have a home business provided it doesn't impact neighbors. I feel like this um, cottage food um, uh, rule is helpful also. I've seen it be helpful to like the veterans, the disabled, the stay-at-home stay moms. It makes it easy for them to work in an environment that they don't have to move out of their home. Um, it's just helpful all around. Um, I've been working at a commercial of a commercial kitchen now for almost two years. Um, I've done a ton of ton. I shouldn't say ton. I've done about four fundraisers here in town with the uh, Parsippany swim team, um, the Mountain Lakes. Um, middle school. Um, I also did uh, the teacher appreciation at um, the high school. Um, and this, you know, having to pay the commercial kitchen, and I try to give back as much as I can, um, just because, it's, you know, that's it's what I do. <laughs> um, so, um, what was I saying? Oh, okay. So, um, the there's a summary of the proposed amendments uh, to the current code follows. Specifically, expand the definition of a customary home occupation in section uh, 430-8 to include cottage food businesses and other harmless home businesses that are not a nuisance to neighbors, make customary home occupations an accessory use in section 430-66 instead of um, a conditional use in section 430-67. This means people can have some occupations as a right instead of going through a burdensome application process impose additional requirements on home occupations like restricted advertisement, no goods on display, and customer visits by appointment only to make certain home occupations uh, not a nuisance or harmful to neighbors. Um, delete the requirement that home occupations occupy only 30% of the first floor of a home. If a person uses their dining room table once a week to package goods that are sold, uh, does the entire dining room count toward the 30%? It's probably best to just delete this requirement entirely. Um, and finally, allowing zoning officers to shut down home occupations that do not comply with requirements and to also provide a right of appeal. Um, there's some facts about the cottage food industry. Cottage food is safe. New Jersey regulators found no evidence of anyone anywhere getting sick from the home baked goods. Cottage food is local. When neighbors, when neighbors try to trade with neighbors, money stays in the local economy. Cottage food is transparent. People who buy from cottage food producer know that what they can get. Uh, if they have questions about the ingredients, sourcing, or safety, they can ask. Cottage food creates jobs. Um, results in Minnesota show a potential economic impact. Within two years, the state granted more than 3,000 cottage food licenses, each representing a small business. By 2020, the number had swelled to 4,000. Um, cottage food empowers women. That's like, for me, <laughs> like big. I grew up in Sicily and it was really hard to make my statement, especially to my dad. By eighth grade, I was not allowed to go to school after that when I graduated. And it was just, I was born in the United States, so I moved back. And you just want to make something of yourself. And, you know, I love my dad so much, but um, it's, it was just, you know, he it was just that's the way it is in Sicily. You know, <laughs> you have to fight <laughs> for what you believe in, I guess. Um, Cottage food expands um, consumer choice. Cottage food fills market gaps, giving consumers more options. 
Thank you for your attention to this matter. I hope you will consider and approve the proposed amendments to the zoning code to make my and other entrepreneurs in Persephone dreams of running a small business from our homes of Persephone a reality. Um, to date, I was looking at the state website and there are up to 469 businesses that have already been approved, 24 alone in Morris County, which I, that's the second page that's not stapled. Says, I actually saw that one one that was approved in Parsippany, which I thought I, I spoke to the gentleman and he said he applied to the state, um, but it's a coffee, um, coffee roasting or something. And he said that it's Eldridge Coffee. He said I can mention his name tonight. So thank you very much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. May, may I make a comment, uh, Council President? Go ahead. Uh, Mrs. Masana, uh, thank you for sharing your story. We, uh, we greatly appreciate your commitment to starting a, a business. Yep. And um, it saddens me that there's obstacles that are getting in front of the way for you to go about and achieving your dream of becoming an entrepreneur. So I just wanted to say that uh, whatever we can do on the part of the Township Council to remove those obstacles that are in front of you of starting that successful business is something that's important to me and, and I uh, am delighted to help. Thank you. Uh, for the administration, we should um, forward this to the planning board for review to see if items in there should be included in the new master plan. And if so, then uh, based on those recommendations, the council can, can make ordinance changes. But the, the process is planning board to council. Okay, um, <clears throat> I agree, but what I would what I would recommend is speaking to the zoning officer number one and number two the health officer as well because this is pertinent to these types of ordinances because um, um i guess you still have to file an application and an application if it's not a permitted use you have to find out the reasons why it's not a per i'm not saying it's not a permitted use but there's health and there's all that stuff that's involved so um my recommendation is include the zoning officer which would be you know jennifer and then our health officer as well well she serves on the yeah i know board. she serves on a planning board so but if this were before them she would have her because we want if we're going to change it we want to get it right because if you don't get it right it becomes worse in the sense that everybody will open up a home business and when you try to open up a home business it can be anything from bacon to catering to all that stuff and there's requirements for all that um for that stuff as well um, and this is bacon's a lot different, but it can segue into that. So we have to be very careful. That's why I recommended sending it to right. the planning board. Agree. The, the state website has the exact rules. Um, for example, it's non TCS products, so they have to be like non refrigerator products and things like that. So there are specific um, restrictions that would need to be abided by. Right. Okay, thank, okay. You very thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Mm -hmm. Seeing no one come forward. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Mr. Musella. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Floor is closed. <clears throat> Introduction of ordinance. Number 2022-15, an ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Parsippany, Troy Hills, Morris County, New Jersey, amending Chapter 119, Cannabis of the Code of the Township of Parsippany, Troy Hills. Be it resolved that the above ordinance be introduced, read by title, and passed on first reading at the meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Parsippany, Troy Hills, held on May 17, 2022, and that said ordinance be further considered for second reading and final passage at a meeting to be held on June 21st, 2022 at 7 p.m. prevailing time or as soon thereafter as the matter may be reached at the municipal building in said township, at which time all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance. Be it further resolved that the clerk be authorized and directed to advertise said ordinance 
with the notice of introduction thereof being published in the official newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the above ordinance by myself. Second. Motion made by Ms. Grignani, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call. Uh, Ms. Grignani? Yes. You want to have some con uh, conversation first before the roll call? Okay, so we had a motion and a second. And, and seconded. And we'll have discussion. discussion. Sure. Okay. Um, I, I just need to know where in ordinance 2022, colon 15, we're, we're eliminating a distance restriction. I don't see it. It's not distance. Council President, the it may be a misnomer distance provision. Um, if there was a red line version that was submitted today, I don't know if you had an opportunity to look at it, but it's really adding, um, um, making an exception from the distance provision, except for a cannabis um, distributor located in the SED 5A zone district. So it carves out an exception from that distance restriction. And is that um, Section 3, Paragraph A? Um, I believe it is. Section Yeah, five. Section 5D. Five, uh, so it's Section 119 is the ordinance, subsection 5D is in David. I don't have a D. I said B. I'm sorry, it's B. B. B I have. D I did not have. Okay. Thank you. You're just welcome. just for the public's information. Um, in twenty twenty when the township passed a, a marijuana ordinance, we prohibited growing marijuana processing marijuana or selling marijuana in Parsippany Township. We only allowed two of the of the six items that the classes, a class three cannabis wholesale license we allowed and a class four cannabis distributor license we allowed. And that was it. They can move it through here, but they can't sell it here. They can't grow it here and they can't process it here. Just so everybody can be aware of what we're doing. In this, in this case now, there is a, uh, a company who wants to uh, utilize, I guess, a warehouse uh, to do either the uh, wholesaler or the distributor. I'm not sure which. Um, and, and that portion is legal in our township. Okay? Everybody up on that? All right, now we can have the roll call. Motion made by Ms. Grignani, seconded by Mr. Negley. A roll call. Mr. Carithi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Mr. Musella? Yes. Mr. Neglio? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2022, colon 11, an ordinance amending Chapter 405, Vehicles and Traffic, Section 11, Stopping or Standing, Prohibited on Certain Streets of the Code of the Township of Persephone, Troy Hills, Morris County, New Jersey. The not notice for Ordinance 2022, Colon 11 was published in the Daily Record, the official newspaper of the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills, on April 25th, 2022, and introduced at the April 19th, 2022 regular meeting. Motion to accept Ordinance 2022, colon 11, be heard in their second and final reading by title only, made by myself. Second. second. Motion made by Mr. Misella, seconded by Ms. Grignani. Roll call. Mr. Carifi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Mr. Musella? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. And Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay. And I'd also like to make a motion to open the public hearing for Ordinance 2022, colon 11, made by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call. Mr. Carifi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Mr. Musella? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Public hearing is open. Uh, anyone can speak on this ordinance only? Seeing nobody come forward, I'll entertain a motion to close on Ordinance 2022, colon 11, by myself. Second. 
Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. Scrignani. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Floor is closed. Whereas the above ordinance was read in title on second reading and a hearing held thereon, now therefore be it resolved that said ordinance be passed on final reading and that notice of final passage of said ordinance be published in the newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the resolution above for ordinance 2022, colon 11, made by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Ms. Grignani. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2022, semicolon 12, on ordinance providing for various capital acquisitions and improvements for the sewer utility of the Township for Sipney Troy Hills and the County of Morris, State of New Jersey, appropriating $1,980,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $1,980,000 bonds of notes of the township to finalize the cost thereof thereof the notice for ordinance 2022 semicolon 12 was publicized in the daily record the official newspaper to the township for Sydney troy hills on april 25th 2022 and introduced at the april 19th 2022 regular meeting motion to accept the ordinance 2022 semicolon 12 to be heard in their second and final reading by title only by myself second Motion made by Mr. Negria, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Uh, Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Negria. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Okay. Public hearing. Public hearing. Motion to open the public hearing for Ordinance 2022, semicolon 12, by myself. Thank you. Motion made by Mr. Negria, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Negria. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Floor is open uh, for the public on this ordinance only. Seeing no one. Motion to close the public hearing for Ordinance 2022, semicolon 12, by myself. Second. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia and Mr. Karifi won the race on that one. <laughs> uh, roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. And Mr. DePiro. Yes. Floor Where closed. Whereas the above ordinance was read in title on second reading and the hearing held hereon. Now, therefore, be it resolved that said ordinance be passed on the final reading and that notice of final passage of said ordinance be publicized in a newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the resolution above for ordinance 2022, semicolon 12, by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Musella. Roll call. Mr. Carini. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2022, colon 13. Bond ordinance providing for various 2022 capital improvements by and in the township of Parsippany Troy Hills in the County of Morris, State of New Jersey, appropriating $3,052,000 therefore and authorizing the issuance of $2,906,665 bonds or notes of the township to finance part of the cost thereof. The notice for ordinance 2022 colon 13 was published in the daily record the official newspaper of the township of Parsippany Troy Hills on April 25th 2022 and introduced at the April 19th 2022 regular meeting motion to accept ordinance 2022 colon 13 be heard in their second and final reading by title only by myself second Motion made by Ms. Grignani, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Motion passes. Public hearing. Motion to open the public hearing for Ordinance 2022, colon 13, by myself. Second. Motion made by Ms. Grignani, seconded by Mr. Musella. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Floor is open on this ordinance only. Seeing no one. Motion to close the public hearing for ordinance 2022 colon 13 by myself. Second. Motion made by Ms. Grignani, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Misella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Floor is closed. Whereas the above ordinance was read in title on second reading and a hearing held thereon, now therefore be it resolved that said ordinance be passed on final reading and the notice of final passage of said ordinance be published in the newspaper according to law. 
Motion to approve the resolution above for ordinance 2022 colon 13 by myself. Second. Motion made by Ms. Guignani, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Ms. Guignani. Yes. Uh, Mr. Risella. Yes. Mr. Neglio. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Motion passes. Bond ordinance 2022 colon 14, bond ordinance providing for various capital acquisitions and improvements for the water utility of the township of Precipitate Troy Hills in the county of Morris, state of New Jersey, appropriating $5,150,000, therefore in authorizing the issuance of $5,150,000 bonds or notes of the township to finance the cost thereof. The notice for ordinance 2022 colon 14 was published in the Daily Record, the official newspaper of the Township of Precipity Troy Hills on April 25th, 2022, and introduced at the April 19th, 2022, regular meeting. Motion to accept the ordinance 2022, colon 14, be heard in their second and final reading by title only by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Mr. Misella. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Misella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Motion public hearing, motion to open the public hearing for ordinance 2022, colon 14, by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Ms. Grignani. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Misella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Floor is open to the public on this ordinance only. Seeing See no one. one come forward, make a motion to close the public hearing for ordinance 2022, colon 14. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Ms. Grignani. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Misella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. And Mr. DePiro. Yes. Whereas the above ordinance was read in title on second reading and hearing held thereon, now therefore be it resolved that said ordinance be passed on final reading and the notice of final passage of said ordinance be published in the newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the resolution above for ordinance 2022, call of 14 by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Misella. Yes. Uh, Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Motion passes. Non-consent agenda. Resolutions R-2022-080, appointing an ADA coordinator pursuant to the Americans with Disabilities Act. Motion to approve the resolution made by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call. Mr. Karifi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Mr. Musella? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Motion passes. R-2022-081, authorizing the township to accept the New Jersey Department of Transportation's offer to purchase the township's easement in connection with south southwest corner of Route 46 Waterview Boulevard intersection. Motion to approve the resolution above by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Misella, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Misella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Motion passes. Consent agenda. Be it resolved, all items listed with an asterisk are routine and non-controversial by the Township Council and will be approved by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence of the agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda by myself. Second. Motion made by uh, Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Misella. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. Spignani. Yes. Mr. Misella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. And Mr. DePiro. Yes. Motion passes. Approval of payroll and bills list. CFL Juan Uribe recommends authorization for payment. One, authorize payment of the May 27, 2022 regular and miscellaneous payroll estimated at $1,650,000. Two, payment of bills from voucher list of 5-15-22 through 5-17-22 is $2,505,753.07. Motion to approve the authorization for payment above by myself. Second. Second. Motion made by uh, Ms. Grignani, seconded to, uh, we'll give it to uh, Mr. Neglia. A roll call. <laughs> Mr. Karifi. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Motion passes. And the ultimate motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second.
Uh, motion made by Mr. Karifi. This time we got to go to Ms. Uh, Grignani. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Mr. Misella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. DiPiro. Yes. Have a good night, everyone. The meeting's adjourned. Good night. Three minutes. Sounds good. You have